Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this afternoon's session looking at the new display interface protocol that has been recently developed. Um, please do feel free to um, ask questions uh, in the chat as we go along, um, and we'll have a QA and a uh, at the end. Um, we are recording this session and you'll get a link to the recording uh, in the next couple of days and you can then uh, share it with colleagues that couldn't uh, attend or review things when you uh, if you're as forgetful as i am these days uh, need to remind yourself of something um so um yeah let's uh dig straight in um so this afternoon we're going to um look at where the um, requirement for a standardized interface for displays came from. Um, we're going to briefly touch on the technology behind it, something called MQTT. Um, we're then going to have a look at some of the architectures that the um, interface supports along with the uh, the way that it sends messages um, and what those messages are um, we're then going to um, have a uh, point to the documentation uh, and the next steps because this is a uh, an interface that is still under development um, and then we'll uh, wrap up with uh, with any questions. So um, if we go back to 2015, um, Artig did some work on um, a display interface specification. Uh, and whilst it had originally set out to try and get a technical specification, the um, was usable we didn't quite get there so basically it covers the the sort of if we were going to get it to a full technical implementation these are the areas that you'd need to include um, and these are the bits that you'd need to uh, to to think about um, and these probably are outside of scope and then it did a bit of work on actually what implementation of a standard would look like, um, but it didn't get to the full level that we've got now. That's because uh, the market suppliers and authorities at the time weren't ready um, for it. Um, we rolled forward um, four years last year, uh, no, six years, sorry, um, and last year, Transport for Wales were beginning to think about what they wanted to do for a uh, national system, how they wanted to uh, look at everything from how they were managing uh, incoming timetable and location data all the way through to um, how they're going to do something in a standardized way for uh, information uh, on displays. Uh, as well as other channels um, there we had various conversations with them um, and it became clear that actually what they were wanting to do was where we'd started out in 2015 where you can have a single cms that you can plug and play displays in from a number of different vendors um, overcoming the uh, the historic problem the a number of you will have come across where over time you buy displays from a number of different suppliers um, and you end up with multiple different content management systems that you have to put messages in and things like that uh, transport for wales wanted to um, overcome that um, so that they only had one place where they needed to put messages and manage content but that they could uh, go away and buy displays from um, any number of different um, 
suppliers and have them all work with the one content management system. So what we've set out to try and achieve um, is a minimum capability that you can expect of all displays that you that, that support the interface. Um, so the sort of the basic functionality that you would expect, um, things like uh, showing real time uh, arrivals and departures and timetable information, uh, ability to put some text based messages on um, and um, things like what happens when you lose communications. Um, so um, we set out with a what's the minimum capability that we need to support um, and we've developed this protocol. Um, it is not meant to constrain um, the way that the industry, both in content management and physical hardware, develops, but it provides a minimum capability that you uh, can expect if you're buying or you need to provide if you're selling. Um, we are well aware that um, over time these things change. You know, there's new functionality. People need specific requirements. Um, hopefully, we've developed something that um, you can uh, enhance locally where you've got those needs. Um, but you can choose a display from somebody that supports the protocol um, and plug it into content management system that you've got. And it's going to work um, at least in a basic way. Um, and off the back of where we are, um, there are a number of tenders that have already come out. Um, Transport for Wales, uh, the procurement is uh, ongoing through um, the uh, SAM framework that's being developed. Um, there are some other um, authorities that have already uh, tendered specifying the use of the protocol. Um, and the trick now is to uh, is to make it work practically. Um, and um, what we've set out to do is to support um, in a stepwise manner um, three types of displays. So a basic text-based display, the sort of thing that you might have seen um, 10, 15 years ago, that's LED, three or four lines, that provides basic real-time vehicle arrival, departure information, text messages, um, and um, some timetables so that if you lose comms, it's got something to display. Um, if we build on that, um, we're looking for support for graphical displays, um, building on text-based displays, because actually the core information that a graphical display will show um, in a section of it that is showing um, departure information is the same as it is would be for a text-based display. But we need to be able to support things like templates, um, data feeds such as weather and news um, and uh, video and things like that um, starts to get quite complicated um, for that but um, there's an awful lot of those out there um, and um, something that Wales and some of the other authorities that were um, involved early on were very keen um, and then um, we know that off-grid displays, battery, solar, um, low power um, will have some slightly different requirements, either because you can't refresh them in quite the same way um, or you haven't got the bandwidth available uh, all of the time. So we know that we've got to do something uh, slightly different um, for those. So ultimately, it'll support those three types of displays. We're quite a long way there already. 
Um, and uh, we'll talk about where we got to um, later on. The protocol um, is based on something called MQTT. Um, it's fairly new to the UK public transport market, but it's well used um, in all sorts of uh, different um, places uh, already in um, uh, a lot of Internet of Things type things, smart cities. If you've got a smart speaker at home, it's probably using MQTT as part of the way it works. Um, but because it's new to uh, a lot of people in public transport, um, we did a, a webinar a couple of months ago, which is available um, through the ARTIG website um, that looks at why we chose MQTT. Um, where is it is it used and um, in particular looked at some of the places that it's already used in transport um, in Europe so it's used on bus and it's used um, on street in displays in a similar way that we're trying to do here um, in Germany uh, for a couple of examples so if you want to understand more about MQTT and why we've chosen it, um, then go away, have a find of um, that webinar. Uh, if you've got any questions following that, then please do feel free to get in touch and uh, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll do our best to uh, provide you with some uh, answers or some pointers to, uh, to where you might find them. So what have we um, done from an architecture point of view? Um, so what have we thought about um, in the ways that this might work? How does it um, fit in with things that you may already be familiar with within your uh, real-time system implementation? Um, at a high level, um if we um look at what you might have you've probably got a prediction engine somewhere somebody will that's creating a uh, a countdown time um merging prediction uh, timetable data and location data um providing it into a content management system um for these purposes of the protocol the, the link between the prediction engine and the content management system um, is out of scope. We're not looking at that. What we're looking at is to the right of the diagram um, is the, the link between content management systems and the displays. Um, so as we've already said, we're using something called MQTT. Um, that is managed by something called a broker. Um, more about that in the webinar on MQTT. Um, this is not something that we uh, expect anybody to be developing themselves. There are a number of different um, brokers out there. Some of them are open source, so you can go away, you can get the source code, you can tweak it and, and enhance it yourselves. But there are also commercial off-the-shelf solutions, um, either things that you um, you buy and install on your own kit, or there are uh, cloud solutions where you pay as you go type arrangements. So it's not something that um, we're expecting people to develop. Um, the bit that you might put on um, the content management system and the display, um, the, those interface um, parts that, that send the messages and receive the messages from the broker. Um, there are loads of libraries out there that you will be able to use to fit in with the way that you develop the software on your CMS or on the display. Um, again, um, a lot of those are open source um, and um, your 
pretty likely to find something that's going to fit with the programming languages and environments that you've that you're using uh, there are versions that work on windows on lots of flavors of linux um, as examples and if you're using microsoft or java or, or any of those um, languages and, and environments um, there are libraries available so you really shouldn't need to be developing your own bits of software this is a plug and play uh, approach using things that are already existing using the hard work that other people have done um, and what we're trying to do is use that in a public transport information specific way um, the protocol does not have anything particularly to say about communications and security other than um, mqtt is an ip based network um, so it works over the internet it works on a local network where you plug a cable in um, it is however designed and was originally created for um, use in the oil industry where you've got low bandwidth maybe really high cost um, over satellites and things like that where you can't guarantee that you're going to have constant communications so it copes with um, a dodgy mobile phone signal that cuts in and out that may be uh, you know, uh, very low bandwidth um, as well um, and so because that covers pretty much all of the ways that um, displays are connected these days we're not interested in specifying communication bearer you know what you should do that's down to uh, your local environment um, likewise we um, are not specific on security that's because there's many ways to skin that cat each of your organizations is going to have particular requirements um, uh, if you've got a display in a um, ticket machine um, on street that um, allows you to top up smart cards and things like that, you know, you're going to have to meet um, credit card standards and requirements. Um, but if you've got a display um, you know, just on its own in a shelter, you don't need that level of security, but you need something. Um, so because of all the different ways that it could be done um, we're leaving that up to individual projects um, if that is something that there is demand for then we can do some things on that um, but it's something we're trying to uh, steer away from at the moment um, the mqtt brokers do provide some basic security um, which may be enough for you some basic HTTPS um, SSL security uh, username password or key based um, security so you might find that for a lot of the projects what's in there already uh, is enough but you certainly want to review that um, on a uh, either a project or a customer by customer basis um, we know that um, there are lots of different ways that people um, architect systems there are lots of ways that people um, handle security um, as we've already um, touched on um, and so um, we do um, support and talk about how you can um, cope with a number of different scenarios um, in the easiest um, uh, setup you've got a display that's just connected to the internet you've put a sim card in or you've put a broadband connection in and it just connects straight into your um, MQTT broker um, it all works you're all happy there's nothing there particular special um, but if you've got um, a um, display provider that 
can do something that isn't supported in in the base standard um, because mqtt is open um, they can provide you with special services you know, if you've got a camera and a display for example um, that um, video data they might just uh, plug into that it's not going to affect the basic core functionality um, but you can add to it and this is where the uh, bit early on about what we're doing is specifying a minimum that you can expect um, that's an example of um, how you can uh, extend it um, a lot of um, displays sit on private mobile data networks to provide some security they're not directly connected to the internet and so if you've got a content management system that's trying to talk to um, those displays on the private network it can't do that directly uh, and so within the mqtt infrastructure there's a concept of a bridge that acts as a gateway um, and so you can put one of those on your boundary between uh, the public internet um, or one network and, and another network um, to um, enable you to get data between your protected networks um, again that's off the shelf type functionality um, and the display is talking um, the uh, the Arctic uh, protocol um, at the other end um, we've got displays that we've always thought things like the the very low power displays you, you need to be really quite careful about the messages and the amount of data that you're sending because otherwise you're uh, burning more battery reducing the life of the battery so they probably will always need their own proprietary interface um, and so um, we do support that um, conversion between uh, the Artig protocol and um, whatever proprietary uh, protocol is used between the specialist system and the displays um, and those are the three core architectures that um, we think are um, in use around the place and therefore need to be supported um, if that's incorrect and you've got a different way um, that you manage displays and, and needs to connect then um, let's uh, let's talk about how we can support it what needs to change um, if uh, it comes to that um, so that's the architecture um, what is the information that goes between the content management system and the PID, uh, the displays. This is where um, we start to talk about messages. So um, MQTT works on messages, standard little bits of information that each of them are standalone. Um, and so what we've done is we've set out um, to try and achieve um, dynamic device discovery. So if you've got a content management system and you're buying a display, you wanna be able to just take that display off the shelf, rock up on street, tell the display what, what bus stop it is, and it goes away and connects into um, the MQTT network and um, gets all the configuration that it needs. So, you know, uh, it can find out, um, you know, well, these are the four bus services that, that run past this bus stop. Um, it can tell the content management system, I'm a three line LED or I'm a 55 inch TFT in portrait mode. Um, and so it can work out how then to um, present the information um, and it's as hands-off as possible um, you don't then need to get into 
um, complexities of, of configuring a display in complex ways on street. Um, it can be done um, as easily as possible from an installation point of view. Um, so plug your display in, it works out where it is and what it needs to display. Um, it then sits there and goes on a regular basis. I'm here and I'm working. Um, that sort of heartbeat um, that you need to, to know um, just to, uh, to make sure that it's working. Um, then um, we'll touch on um, topics in a bit. This is the core of the um, public transport information. They're uh, contained in something called topics. Um, the, the messages, they're extensible, um, a bit like um, XML. If you've ever used Trans Exchange or Siri, um, you can add extra bits of information in. In this case, you can add extra messages in. Um, if you understand them, then you can do something about them. But if you don't understand them, then you're just going to go, don't know about that and ignore it. Um, and so um, uh, it's a way of um, helping suppliers enhance and develop um, their displays while still supporting um, the standard. Um, and they can do things that are vendor specific if they really need to. Um, we do actually want to have a, um, a decent um, competitive display market. We're not trying to, uh, to break that. What we're just trying to do is get some more interoperability going. Um, and so um, under MQTT, um, messages, uh, you need to, to work out whether a message is for you um, and to display it. And so um, there is a hierarchy um, involved. Um, and so what we've tried to do is um, understand the way that um, current messages, be that a disruption message or an advert um, uh, or a um, the bus is three minutes away um, bit of information, how they um, can fit and how we can get down to um, as effectively as possible a way of disseminating that information um, that, that is reusable. What we don't want to do is have to send um, the same uh, disruption message to a thousand displays. We want to just go, there's a disruption message and here it is and everything that needs to uh, display it is going to display it. And so we do that by a hierarchy um, and we've done that on a geography basis. So you start off with um, a locality, you know, a city, a town. Um, we are suggesting um, you use the MPTG localities because that's a nice, um, easily understood structure. Um, you then got um, a number of um, bus stops in an area, you know, you might have um, a bus station or you might have a uh, town centre or high street where there's a number of stops um, grouped together in an area. Um, you've then got individual stops um, and you might have um, more than one um, device at a stop. You might have a double sided display, for example, that can do different things on both sides. Um, and so um, by having this hierarchy, we can publish something um, that says this disruption message is valid for a locality um, or this message is, is actually designed for the forward facing display at this particular bus stop. Um, and um, the display sits there and listens for messages um, uh, based on its subscription. Um, and you can subscribe um, in a hierarchical manner. So 
um, a display might just subscribe to um, messages for itself. So all it will do is display things that are specific to it. Um, that might well be something like, you know, a countdown real time. Um, it might be a message that says this bus stop is closed. Um, but it may as well also subscribe to messages for uh, the town centre. So if there's a message about, you know, there's a there's a parade uh, on Saturday and so the high street's going to be um, closed for a few hours, any bus stop uh, in the town centre, you're probably going to want to display that. So you could ask displays to subscribe to messages for town centre, for example, um, or the whole area um, or, you know, just the high street within the town centre. And so you can um, subscribe um, based on the hierarchy to get it to display information as easily um, as you can. And you can subscribe using wildcards. So you know, if you subscribed for everything for the town centre, you'd get everything that was tagged for the town centre. Um, if you just subscribed to your individual device, um, then you're only going to get that information. And um, the messages, um, there's some core messages. So these are the ones that any type of real-time display is going to want to need to um, understand. Um, so there's messages around um, the discovery and the sharing of the capability of displays. Um, there's um, the ability to uh, configure text. Um, so for those of you that have been involved up till now, version one of um, the basic text display um, protocol um, didn't include this, but in the working on graphical displays, we've identified that actually we need this for all display types. So you can say, you know, a particular font size or bold or font if it supports multiple different fonts on your display um, because some LED displays do um, as well as uh, graphical ones. Um, scheduled departure information, so timetables, um, real-time departure, you know, three minutes away, four minutes away, including occupancy. Um, and that's based on the um, wherever possible all of this is based on things that your content management system will already be familiar with um, because it's Siri based uh, data structures and formats. Um, clear down. So, you know, the bus has left. Please remove me from um, the display as quickly as possible. Um, messages, information messages and a priority. Uh, quite often these days, there's three or four messages that you might want displayed. How does the display know which one to display? You can set a priority. So, you know, if you have the highest priority, uh, road closed or bus stop closed, you know, that's going to override one that says something about, you know, um, schools go back in a couple of weeks' time. Please take allow more time to for your journey that sort of thing you can you can set some priority um multilingual support um so um if you're in wales welsh language app requires you to support two languages so we do that um status report or heartbeat type messages you know i'm here i'm working or oh no i've overheated um and um, snapshot. So what are you actually showing on the display? You might think you know because you've sent all these messages to a display and you might be able to piece together what it should be showing in your content management system. But actually, sometimes it's useful to know actually what the display is showing at any one point in time. So please give me a snapshot. Um, and um, the um, for something like the snapshot, if it's taking a 
screenshot um, for example then that's binary data rather than um, uh, something that you can contain in a in a text structure and so um, where there's binary data we um, we handle that by effectively providing a URL to where it can be accessed um, and downloaded um, that's aside from snapshot that's more of useful for the graphical displays um, but we do support um, binary data um, where it's needed um, a quick example um, of what a message looks like um, if you're uh, used to XML or uh, Java um, then hopefully this should be look fairly familiar this is a clear down request um, it's a bi-directional communication um, so content management system says um, clear down um, at a particular device um, and this is the um, message that we previously sent that you want to clear down because it's departed um, you could be because it's cancelled for example but in this case it's departed the display then goes yeah thank you message received and done so that's the core messages and structures um, for text displays um, which uh, every type of real-time display is going to need um, Graphical displays, we're increasingly seeing that on the street, TFTs and, and even some of the higher density LEDs and things like that. You'll have seen, um, particularly on rail, them being able to do some sort of icon type things and, and semi-graphics. Um, so for graphical displays, the display, um, there's a message structure um, to, to provide the capability of the displays. You know, I'm a 55 inch portrait. I can do 1024 by 768 pixels uh, and I'm black and white. Uh, highly unlikely, but you know, uh, it can say what it can do. Um, support for multimedia, so video, um, uh, pictures, JPEGs, that sort of thing. Um, you know, where where the display needs to go and download the uh, information um, and um, we do that because every time you send a message um, about you know for example in a playlist put this advert um, uh, top right hand corner you don't want the display to then go and download that image or that video every single time that's wasteful on bandwidth uh, which costs um, so you actually want to do be referencing that separately so that you can store it separately from playlists uh, it supports playlists supports carousels so you can get things changing um, over time you know four or five adverts you might swap between um, departure information and a message that sort of thing uh, along with um, the layout that you want to use you know in the case of the picture on the screen you've got um, departures on the left and and uh, other information on the right you might swap that around in a different template for use at a different time of day for example um, and graphical displays is the bit that um we are working on and getting close to hopefully being able to release uh, an initial version one um, all of this as you'd expect is documented um on the rt website we've got a project page um that's got all the background and um links to all of the documents all of these documents because um, we want this to be used in as many places as possible um, and because um, we were very fortunate to um, have Transport for Wales uh, support the development of this, this standard is, is open 
Um, it's publicly available to anybody. You don't need to be an Arctic member. Uh, all the documentation uh, is there for um, on the public side of the site. Um, we've broken the way we've developed the interface down into different parts in the same way that um, Siri and NetX and other standards do. So part one sets out the basic communications infrastructure and network architectures that we've talked about today. Part two um, covers off the common data structures, the things that every type of display are going to need um, and the core content messages. Um, so if you've got a text-based display, an LED, for example, you just need to worry about parts one and two. Um, part three, um, support for graphical displays. So that's the bit that talks about carousels and multimedia and things like that. Um, and um, we now don't think that there's too much difference between what's needed for graphical and specifically for low power. So I think that low power will end up in part three rather than having its own separate, very thin document. Um, there's another part, um, which will be part four, not part five, looking at fault management, reporting, you know, displays being up for five hours oh, I'm overheating or I'm running out of memory, that sort of thing. Um, and then um, further parts to handle things like um, audio announcements and accessibility. Um, and uh, you know, if there's enough demand, things like, uh, you know, you might have an air quality sensor in a display. Um, you might have a camera in a display if, if people want to see that standardized, then we can add more parts that just build on the existing stuff. Um, so a supplier doesn't need to constantly keep um, having to um, keep on top of updates to, um, you know, part two, for example, you know, hopefully once that's sorted out properly, um, you shouldn't need to touch it for a few years, if ever. Um, and so, you know, you don't have to get into a constant development cycle to support things that you might not use yourself. So that's why we've broken it down into um, different parts. Um, parts one, two and three, the documentation is on the site. Part three hasn't been formally released. So it's 0 0.4, I think, at the moment. Um, but parts one and two have. Um, there is a draft of a version 1.1 1 .1, um, for part two, because as we um, talked about earlier, the need to support fonts for um, more basic displays. So where do we go from here? We've got a bit of a roadmap that we put together earlier on this year. Um, we're sort of a bit behind on, on where we'd set out to be. Um, but we've got um, draft of part three. There's a working group reviewing the latest updates to that um, next week. Um, and all being well, we'll have another one in September, at which point we'll be able to um, sign off part three and release part three as, as version one. Um, there's a draft of um, part two update, as we've said. Um, all of the updates and things are on, on, the, on the site. Um, we're starting to see procurements um, happening. Um, if you're wanting to go out and specify this, then please get in touch and we can um, talk about how other people have specified it um, in procurements. Um, hopefully at some point fairly soon we'll be able to issue a short note on this is what you should be saying but there's some disagreements between different procurement people about how to specify it at the moment um we're expecting to see first implementations um 
in the autumn, October, November-ish sort of time, probably. Um, and at which point we'll really know whether what we've come up with works properly or not. Um, if it needs some tweaking and things like that, we'll go through a review and revision process. But um, conversation so far suggests that uh, it's pretty robust what we've done. Um, so that's the next steps. Um, has anybody got any questions? I recognise there's a load of... I can't believe that uh, that all your questions have been answered. Tim. Gary. Yeah, hi, mate. All right. Um, just a quick question. Um, if we're going to mention this in a tender, then what are we calling it? Uh, so it is RTIG uh, T047. RTIG T047. Yeah. It's the number that's on the front of the documents. Okay. Yeah, that's fairly fundamental that I should have told you. That's yeah. all right. No, no, no. I just, uh, <laughs> yeah, obviously, you know, we need to uh, have a specific reference to it, don't we? So, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I've yeah. seen it called a number of things in other tenders so far, so CMS to PID yeah. protocol and those things. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Tim. As I say, we're we're trying to come up with a standard agreed way of presenting it because it's not a SEN standard or a BSI standard. Um, the way you have to present it is slightly different, I'm told. But I'm sure you'll... Uh, West Midlands procurement team will understand that, Gary. Yes, I'm sure they will. Yeah. Yeah. While you're having a think, um, we've got a number of other sessions coming up. Um, 22nd of August um, and the 25th of August and 13th of September, there's some workshops um, looking at the roadmap for the Analyze Bus Open Data Reporting Service um, and um, what you want to see being developed, um, how you might want things to change, what you, what you don't like and what you do like about things at the moment, um, please come along to those. We're trying to um, make sure that we focus on um, authorities and operators separately because they're quite different use cases sometimes and so um, we're, we're trying to encourage you to um, join in the relevant um, uh, group 13th September 1 will cover authorities and operators um, in the one session but we're probably going to use breakout rooms um, so you'll uh, be with other operators if you're an operator for example um, 1st of September, um, we're going to um, explore something that you might have started to see um, referenced in a number of places, digital twins. What on earth are they? Um, they're, they're cropping up all over the place, everything from um, vehicles to factories to whole cities having digital copies of the real thing. Um, what on earth are they? What do they mean? Um, how do they potentially relate to what we do in public transport? Um, we're going to start to explore that. Um, and um, off the back of that, um, I can see a working group to, to explore it coming off. But let's start with um, uh, finding a bit more about and, and getting to a, to a base level of knowledge first. Um, then um, in Birmingham, 21st of September, a face-to-face -face, um, looking at improving bus services using data, particularly from an operator perspective, um, schedules and, and timetables and live operations. Um, how are people using data for that? So we've got people like um, Stagecoach and Reading Buses coming along, talk to us, but also some suppliers. Um, showing us what they can do and, and how they're doing it elsewhere around the world and using um, things to, to help run bus services more effectively. Um, something that uh, 
very topical given the uh, the end of September um, deadline approaching um, and the need to uh, to be aware of uh, of efficiencies with uh, with reduced passengers and uh, and therefore budgets. Um, and if nobody's got any more questions, Denise. Hi there, sorry. Um, I thought of one while you were going through things, it might be a, a point of detail that you just say, oh yeah, that's like something to come down the line. But one yeah. of the things we're looking at putting on our displays is um, a kind of a hybrid, I suppose, of like real time data, but actually going to be like real journey time information. Um, at the minute, we're developing something um, which is like next fastest service too. But in time, we we hope to be doing like your next bus into Birmingham city centre is coming in two minutes and it will take 20 minutes. Would you see that as one of those items you've listed down there as a real time or is it a, is it kind of a media or is it something different and do I need like, yeah, I guess that's my question. Yeah, no, that's, a, that's, a, what you've already... yeah that's a really good uh, point. Um, it's not a core message that we've got at the moment. Um, so let me go away and um, talk to uh, my colleague Rob West, who's the, uh, the the technical brains behind the messages and those structures um, to see where it would best fit um, because that ought to be fairly simple um, to support but uh, that's me saying that rather than Rob <laughs> um, so yeah let me let me go away and uh, and talk to Rob and um, but I mean that's you know that is the sort of thing that we want to be finding out that people wanting to do and we'll we'll make it we'll add in the support for it in some way, whether it's Brilliant. in part two or or a separate part, but yeah, we'll 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 support that somehow, and uh, perhaps we can uh, have a separate conversation about how that how you you got that data um, and how you can spit it out to understand that a bit a bit more. But no, that that would be a really that would be a really cool thing to see on street. That's what we're that's what we're aiming for. We, we're nearly at the first bit, which is saying. Your next fastest bus is coming in two minutes, um, but the next bit to sort of show the journey time as well is is an aspiration. But we think we we hoping we've got the the pipeline there to be able to do it. So thank you. Yeah, yeah thank you, thank you all for your time this afternoon. I um, hope you found it useful. Um, if you want to get in touch, contact details are on the screen. Um, I suspect you already know them anyway, um, but please do feel free to get in contact um, about uh, anything to do with public transport technology, this interface, or um, anything else that uh, that you think we might be able to uh, help with. Uh, thank you for your time this afternoon and have a good rest of the day. Thank you for watching this RTIG webinar. To find out more about RTIG and our work, then please visit our website at rtig.org.uk. Thank you.